In this video, we will look at some techniques to evaluate typical limit problems in past year papers. As a start, let's look at the basic limit rules. Suppose the limits of fx and gx, as x tends to c, are finite and denoted by L and M, respectively. Then the limit of fx plus gx, as x tends to c, is equal to L, the limit of fx, plus M, the limit of gx. Similarly, for the other operations, we get k times L, L times M, L divided by M, provided M is not zero, and L to the power N. In particular, this result is true when L and M are finite and m is not equal to zero. But when these conditions are not met, you cannot use the di division rule. A typical partial limit problem takes this form. The question is, is this limit equal to L over m, limit of f divided the limit of g? Taking a look at these three problems, we realize this is not so. In the first two problems, the limit m equals to zero violates the condition for the division rule. In problem three, both limits l and m are infinite, so again we cannot use the division rule. To get around this, we try to change the function expression to a different form. The techniques we will be using is factorization, the use of conjugates, and considering limits at infinity. We shall look at these more clearly in the next few slides. This is problem 1 and it is a past year term test problem. If we take the limits of the numerator and denominator separately, we get m equals to 0. So we cannot use the division rule and write the answer as L over M. But since both numerator and denominator are polynomials, we can simplify the expression by factorization. So this becomes, in the numerator, x times x minus 1, and in the denominator, x plus 7 times x minus 1. Simplifying the expression by cancelling the common terms x minus 1, we get x over x plus 7. This time, if we take the limit separately, the numerator limit is 1, and the denominator limit is 1 plus 7, which is 8. Since 8 is non-zero, and 1 and 8 are finite, we can use the division rule and take 1 divide 8, the answer. In problem 2, if we consider limits of numerator and denominator separately, again we have m equals 0, so we cannot use the division rule and write it as L over m. In this problem, we can also use factorization to simplify the expression. Recall this formula. Note that x minus 9 can be rewritten as square root x squared minus 3 squared, which can be rewritten as square root x minus 3 times square root x plus 3. Therefore, we can factorize the denominator giving square root x minus 3 and square root x plus 3. Now the square root x minus 3 are common terms, so we can cancel them 
to obtain 1 over square root x plus 3. Taking the limit, we have 1 over square root 9 plus 3, or 1 over 6. Another way to do this problem without factorization is to make use of conjugates. We use conjugates when we have square root terms. In this case, we call that a minus b times a plus b is a squared minus b squared. Therefore, if we multiply numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the numerator, which is square root x plus 3, we will get square root x like a squared minus 3 squared for the numerator which simplifies to x minus 9 again simplifying by cancelling the common terms x minus 9 from both numerator and denominator we get this which is 1 over square root 9 plus 3 or 1 over 6 as before. Before we look at problems involving limits and infinity, let us look at these two limits. Suppose n is positive. Then the limit of xn, when x tends to infinity, is infinity. For the second limit, the denominator xn tends to infinity when x tends to infinity. Therefore, 1 over xn tends to 0. So the limit is 0. We shall make use of these two limits in the next few problems. In this past year main exam problem, we need to find two limits. Consider the first limit. If we take the limits of the numerator and denominator separately, we get m equals to 0, so we cannot use the division rule and write the answer as l over m. We try factorization. Factoring the numerator, we get t squared times t minus 2. Factoring the denominator, we get t plus 3 times t minus 2. Simplifying by cancelling the common terms t minus 2, the simplified expression is t squared over t plus 3. This time, if we take the numerator limit, we get 2 squared, which is 4. And the denominator limit is 2 plus 3, which is 5. Therefore, since the denominator limit is non-zero and both limits are finite, we can write 4 over 5 as the an answer. In part b, if we take the limits of the numerator and denominator separately, we get infinity in the numerator as well as the denominator. Again, since both limits are not finite, we cannot use a division rule. In this case, we solve the problem by considering the leading terms t cubed and t squared. The leading terms are the terms of the highest exponent. Since the leading term in the numerator is, has a higher power than the leading term in the denominator, t cubed will dominate, so therefore it will increase faster than t squared. So the overall answer is infinity, as t goes to infinity. Let's look at another problem. The limit required is this. In this case, the leading terms are x squared and 2x squared, for both numerator and denominator. Since x squared and x squared are growing at the same rate, the answer for this limit is the ratio of the coefficients, namely half. And since the limit of a constant is constant, this is also half. So the answer is 
one. In this last problem, the limit required is this. As x tends to infinity, the leading terms will dominate. They are x squared and x cubed. Since x cubed will increase much faster than x squared as x goes to infinity, the whole term will go to zero. So the limit is zero. The limit when x goes to infinity of the constant 1 remains 1. Therefore the answer is 1.